Yo, 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 yo. If they know, they know. It's your boy Smoke News TV. Yeah, we back with another one. Welcome back, G Depp. That part after doing 13 years. So make sure y'all smash that like button, hit that subscribe, notification on, share the video. Most importantly, smash the like. The like button is free. It ain't gonna cost you that part. So let's let's get this video going, man. So I don't know if a lot of people know about G Depp. I grew up here in G Depp, you know, I grew up here in that bad boy era and all that stuff. So G Depp is definitely somebody that was actually on fire back in the day before he did this cuckoo stuff he went through. God bless him. He made a home fit. Now, I mean, he did 13 out of 15. I think 13 out of 15 or 16. He made a home. He did 13 joints, though. Now, if anybody's under the rock, nobody knows what's going on. G. Depp actually confessed to a murder that he did back in like 1993 around there. Several years later, after he signed the bad boy, did all that. So, you know, I got to react to this and we got to speak about this because I felt like I always felt like, let me say that, I always felt that somebody actually made G. Dev go cuckoo for him to go down there and actually confess to go, for him to go do that. Something that happened almost, what, 10, 12, whatever years ago from the year that he went down to the station. You just signed a deal. You come from poverty. You come from the project. You just signed a deal with Puff. You got several, you got a couple of single hits, special delivery is one of his biggest hits. You play that in the club now, that's that junk still be jumping. And I'm lying. What are we talking about? Y'all know if that special delivery song come on, y'all know y'all gonna come on. That junk still be smashing in the club. So my question is: we all know how did he play? We all know how he did all his artists back in the days, you know, took they publish and made terrible contract decisions with them. Allegedly, did did he have something to do with this G Dev situation back in the days? Also, this is my opinion. But before we get to the videos and clips, let's get this copyright fair use disclaimer out the way. You can find that in my description on my channel. Everything that I speak on is for educational and entertainment purpose. Again, copyright fair use disclaimer. You can find that in my description on my channel. Everything that I speak on is for educational and entertainment purpose. And the clips and videos that I play are also owned by the original creators. <clears throat> so we got that out the way. So that's my question to y'all, man. Did Diddy got something to do with this? Because we all know how the industry play. They got them, they, they can get their hands on certain things that can make you go cuckoo. That part. And everything I speak on is allegedly and alleged. But we know this. If niggas go cool, cool in the streets, who make you think niggas won't go cool, cool in the industry? That's my question to y'all. So we're gonna we're gonna review this because, nah, man, God bless the man home after thirteen years. But I always felt there was a backstory behind this. So we're gonna react to this. So welcome home, G. Dev, after doing thirteen years, homie. Salute, man. Let's get to it, though. Come on, get down. <laughs> 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 I told you I was bringing you home, man. Right? Yeah. 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 God bless that boy home, man. He read a lot of books. Y'all can see, he, I mean, it's a, I think it's like five, six, seven more seconds of that clip right there. Y'all can do y'all research and check it out. Basically, everybody hugging him, giving him love. Diddy wasn't there, but we all know what Diddy going through right now. But see, my thing is, like I keep telling y'all, when I play these clips and y'all start using y'all own brains and y'all know how this, y'all know how this nigga play allegedly in that industry and how he did dirt niggas dirty on them contracts, took nigga published, all that. Biggie took then that Biggie mind 10 years to get that shit. What we talking about? Am I lying? Craig Mack, he passed away. What did he? Did he take care of Craig Mack after he passed away? And Craig Mack had a few words about him. That part. We're going to get to that story one. I'm going to do one of the Craig Mack stories, too. 
Cause we're gonna do this bad boy little little roster that he got under his list that he did dirty. Niggas died, didn't get no health insurance. Niggas he ain't help niggas went black rob, another dude. Rest in peace, black rob. That was G Dev artist. I'm gonna let y'all hear all this. I'm telling you, it's it's more to the story with G Dev that people don't understand. And I'm gonna play the clips where he actually confessing to the murder that he did. Yeah, that part. I got the clip. We're going to play that part. We're going to react to it. But let's continue, though. Make sure y'all smash that like button, light that smoke up, and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you have subscribed to the channel because I don't know what you're waiting on. But smash that like button. Support your boy, man. Let's continue. Mad Puff Daddy, this is to, you know, the... the now, this is G. Depp explaining how he got, how him, how him and Diddy connected and Diddy came down to the projects and I, 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 and made him sign that contract and all. I ain't gonna say made him, but basically gave him an offer. And this is G Depp's story, how he met Diddy after introducing, after Black Rob introduced Diddy to on G Depp. Because remember, G Depp was Black Rob artist. And I'm gonna play that clip later on. Let's continue though. Mad Puff Daddy, this is to, you know, to, to, to meet him formally, to, you know, talk about the contract and, all, and everything. He, he sent the Bentley to the project. I was just G Depp. You know what I mean? Running around, doing my little my little shows here and there. You know what I'm saying? Whatever I was doing. I mean, I saw something silver coming down the block, and the lights. You know, the lights on the car on, on the Bentley got. You know, they got the round lights, so it was like it was coming down the block, and you seen it coming down the block almost like you know what I mean? Like it looked like unreal, like a uh, spacecraft in the in the in the in the, in the, in the neighborhood. You know what I mean? He rolled out the window. It was like, you know, it was like, it was like kind of unspoken. I kind of knew that it was the car. You know what I'm saying? Like, wow. He, he, he laid it down flat. He was like, yo, I'm going to sign you. I'm going to sign you. Now, when I play the clip later with Gene Dean, with Big Gene, pardon me, when Gene Dill did he ex security go, everybody knew who the hell Big Gene is. He's been on the internet going crazy on Diddy for several years. But when I play a clip with him actually telling us that was Black Rob artists. Remember, G. Depp come out of Harlem also with Black Rob. They come from the same block. That part. 120, 112, El Body around that section. That's where them niggas come from. And everybody know Black Rob. Everybody knew G. Depp. But G. Depp was on fire. Like I keep telling y'all. Y'all go to his first album, man. Child of the Ghetto. One of my favorite albums. That boy, that boy had bars, he had music, he knew music, he smacked beats, all that. Did he sign them, took that nigga out the hood, gave that nigga a terrible contract, and the rest was history. This nigga ended up going cuckoo, going down to the station on a bike and confessing to a murder that happened in there 15 years ago from the prior date that he went there. And we're going to play the clip right now. And y'all tell me how y'all feel about this. The nigga just get signed and all this. He on top right now, special delivery, one of the hottest singles, couple other singles. And you just turn around, go down to the station and confess to a murder? This nigga ain't confessed to that murder while he was running the streets, smoking, not I mean smoking, drinking, hanging with the homies, all that. And you telling me he ain't confessed to that time? Why you ain't confess around that time? See, that's the shit that made me think twice about that G. Depp story. And this ain't nothing new, because I always thought about this back in the day, when I was younger, when this shit happened. I said, yo, hold up. Why he ain't confess when he was running the streets with the homies all in Harlem and all this shit? All, all of a sudden, now you're going to talk. Now, I mean, you get a contract from Diddy, end up, like I said, nigga probably went to these parties, allegedly, probably seen, we don't know. They drop things in y'all drink. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Boop, put that in your drink. Next thing you know, you go cool, cool the next four days. That third day, you start going crazy. You don't know how the hell you went crazy. That part. And everything I speak on is alleged. But we know how they play. Allegedly. Let's play the clip with G. Depp actually confessing to the murder, man. Make sure y'all like that smoke or smash that like button. Do me that favor. Comment on below, too, if y'all... If y'all got something to say, because I got a lot to say. So this night you're looking to, to get, get some money, you said. Yeah. Now this is 2010. 2010 is where he confessed. This is the video I'm about to play for y'all right now. We're gonna and I'm gonna react to it. This happened back in like '93. 
What are we talking about here? Exactly. To be continued, man. Shout out to the homie G. Death for coming home after 13 years, man. So this night you were looking to, to let's get some money, you said. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 rode, I rode the bike over. I rode the bike in the, in the neighborhood for a, like a couple of minutes. Then I just uh, went to, I went towards Park Avenue and I saw a guy standing there. Uh, smoking like he was smoking a cigarette or something like that. And uh, I, I just uh, I approached him, I got off the bike and I approached him. He didn't seem like he saw me, so you know, I just approached him. And then when I, when I approached him, I asked him where the money was. He didn't, he didn't say anything. It's like, he just, uh, he just really just like, you know, responded, you know. Y'all just heard that, right? Oh, we got two more clips. I'm playing the clips they actually confessed. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. Smash the like button, it's free. Ain't gonna cost you support the channel, man. Like that smoke up, y'all know the vibe. So this nigga jumped on a bike. Rolled down by the 112th Park Avenue. He gonna explain it even more. Ran down on some random nigga that was smoking a cigarette. Now remind you this ain't no op, this ain't no high top, I mean a high drug dilly. This ain't none of that. This is back in 93. Just to get y'all, now I mean, called up because y'all probably got it confused. Y'all probably think he confessed to a murder that happened that same year that he went to confess on. No, that ain't the story. He confessed in 2010. The murder happened in 1993, 92. One of the two years. What are we talking about here? And you ain't confessing. All them years went by 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2003. All them years went by, you ain't confessed while you was running around with your homies, popping bottles, this, that, and the third. Black, remind y'all, Black Rob is his homie. Black Rob, was, you know, he had that, that single, Whoa. Everybody know about the single, Whoa. That shit blew up, too. And that shit still get, that, you pump that shit in the club, that shit still be smashing. And my mind, you play that shit in New York, that shit jumping. You play special delivery in New York club, that shit jumping. Anywhere in the tri-states. East Coast, period. Come on, man. I ain't trying to hear that. There's more to this story. That's why I'm going to react to this even more. But let's continue. I'm just wondering, but he, he ran down on the nigga on a bike. This is where he left today. Ran down on the nigga bike. The nigga had a cigarette. The nigga looked at him like he was crazy. To be continued. Like, uh, facially, like, you know, but like, he, didn't, he didn't say anything. So, you know, I just was, I just kept asking him again, where, where was the money? And he put his hands up, and then he just, uh, I don't know, we caught eye contact, then he, then, then he just, then he, he like, grabbed the gun, and uh, it was kind of like a struggle, and I pulled the gun, pulled the gun back from him, and uh, then I fired, I fired um, three times. And um, I didn't realize it was hitting him or anything. I just, cause I, I didn't, I didn't see anything. Or, you know, I, I just fired. I, I fired uh, three times, and then, then I, uh, I went uh, after after I fired the gun. I just, I kind of just like ran back to the the. the the, the bicycle that I had on the side, and I got on it. He kind of he kind of came after me, and I rode off. Y'all heard that right? The nigga was on a bicycle. He was on a bike, man. This is special delivery G debt. What we talking about here, bro? This nigga had a couple singles that was smashing New York City radios, man. And Special Delivery was one of them. That shit went platinum, all types of shit. Am I lying? What are we talking about? Do y'all research. Do y'all research on G-Deck, man. 
for people that don't know, for the youngest that don't know, this is the bad boy ever of the early 2000s. This one, Black Rob, he's part of Harlem. G. Depp came, came along later on, a couple of years later, got a deal with Puff. Y'all would not, I just played a clip when G. Depp told y'all. He said, man, listen, I was in the project. I'm doing my couple of shows, getting my little money. Who was taking them to them couple of shows? Black Rob. He was on the Black Rob. That was Black Rob artist. But then, you know, Puff, you know, he's a genius. Don't get it twisted. Puff, when Puff see, when, when Diddy see talent, he gonna grab you up. He gonna bring you over here. And he gonna use your ass, that part. And make you sign a terrible contract. A legend. And everything I speak on is a legend. That's what he did with G-Debt, man. G-Debt went crazy after that. Went broke, money went low, all types of shit. He just told you. He just told y'all, what make a nigga want to go down there and confess to a goddamn murder that happened in 1993, bro? The nigga went crazy. He went cuckoo. Bro, what make a nigga go like that? Money. Or possibility the nigga was, probably was partying with Diddy with all these allegations going on now and probably seeing some old crazy shit. We don't know. But these rumors about Diddy that's going on right now and everything I speak on is alleged. These allegations going on with Diddy. These shit's been, been going on since the early 2000s. These rumors been going on. We ain't had social media. That's the thing. But you had, you had people like a Wendy Williams. Shout out to Wendy. Hope she do well. But she was one of the females in that radio, in that type of um, industry that was exposing niggas back then before this social media even came out. Niggas thought Wendy was bugging out. Niggas thought Wendy Willis was lying. And it ain't just her. There's other people, too. Exactly. So what I mean is G. Depp probably was one of the niggas that went crazy and seen something like that. Old boop, put something in this goddamn drink. And everything I speak on is a legend. You a nigga in the hood. You partying. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, you take the wrong sip, pause. You take the wrong smoke, nigga. You gonna end up going cuckoo. How many times that happened to regular niggas in the hood? That part. Let's continue with this last clip with G. Depp on um, confessing to this murder, man. And I rolled off. And I, I rolled, I rolled up the block, then around the block, and then I came like back around the block on the hundred and twelfth. And Park Avenue looked up the block. And I, um, and I, I saw, like, I saw, uh, you know, I, like a scene, or uh, I saw, like, a police a police car. I don't know if it was, uh, I saw a car with the lights, the, you know, the lights coming towards me the wrong way, you know, the wrong way on the, on the block. And I saw an officer look like was somebody kneeling over somebody on the floor, so I figured that's what it was. And I, then I, I, I just rolled the bike back around the opposite way, and then I went into my building. That's the whole story. Now, if y'all want to not maybe wind it, go back and hear it, whatever. This nigga basically said back in, back in 1993, 92, whatever, he was on a bike. Now, with my eye, y'all, he was, I mean, I was a little nigga, and I mean, younger, doing what he was doing. I mean, he's a stick up kid, probably. But what make you want to confess to something like that when you actually on top? But then again, pardon me, I don't, he went crazy because the money broke, couldn't, couldn't reach out to Puff probably. Look what the locks went through. Look what Mace went through. What we talking about here? Locks had to go to the radio station and do it. Come on, go through your history. Niggas had to call Puff up in the radio station, Hot 97, it's on YouTube, going crazy on Puff. Talk about, nigga, we, we on our way over there. Nigga, you going to give us our puppets back. We'll make y'all think G. Depp ain't going through that shit, man. Black Rob Pie was telling us, yo, you know, Black Rob Pie was telling him to calm down. You know, we're going to get it right. Come on, because that's Black Rob, little, that's Black Rob, homie. G. Depp Pie went cool, cool, bro. Come on. Y'all got to remember, if anybody know the g Depp story, everybody said, yo, g Depp went crazy, yo. They, they say he went crazy off of dust. 
Anybody know that drug dust is? Y'all know what Angel does? Y'all know what I'm talking about. They say he went crazy. I don't believe that shit. That nigga was smoking that shit back in the early 90s. Why he ain't confessing? 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003. Two. Come on. All the way to 2010, then you confess. No, because special delivery was popping. He wanted his pubs back. He was broke. Pie went crazy or allegedly Diddy or somebody made him go crazy. That part. So they don't got to worry about this nigga so they could get all this bread off this nigga off the public. That part. And everything I speak on is alleged, but we know how they play. You worth more when you're dead or you fucking or, 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 or you away for a couple mad years. You worth more of that. Especially if you were locked up for 10 years or better and you ain't got to publish right or oh, you guarantee your um your manager and your um uh, uh, your the, the nigga that signed you the label. Yeah, them niggas is eating off the singles. That's what happened with G Debt while he was locked up. What we talking about? Like I said, you can you can play special delivery right now in the club in the tri-state, New York City, anywhere, nigga, and that shit gonna jump. That's a smash right there. That's a song like it's still you still can hear it to this day. Am I lying? What are we talking about? Comment on below. Smash that like button. Let's see what Big Gene had to say, though. How you feel about the situation with G-Dub? When he was with Bad Boy, you got to realize he came in with Black Rob. He was supposed to be Black Rob's artist. But Black Rob didn't have no paperwork on him. It was only, you my man, I'm going to bring you up here to Bad Boy. We're going to do this music together. You know, you're going to be my artist. Puff seen that, and what he do? Snatched him away from Black Rob, put him on paper, and gave him a deal. But that was Black Rob's artist. G. Depp was. They did special delivery. This for my though, special delivery. Spit like this, get my wrist all glittery. And he had a few nice hits and probably could have been something real big. I, I guess after a few songs and everything like that, Puff just didn't, he didn't like the vibe with G, G Depp because him and Rob at the time was still doing some of the things that they was doing in the streets and Puff couldn't control that and uh, let him go, drop him. See, Puff was the type of dude, if he couldn't handle you, he didn't want you on his label. And that's what happened. I just broke that down earlier. Exactly. He couldn't control G Depp. G Depp was a street nigga. He under Black Rob. Black Rob was his big homie, nigga. G Depp probably one of his publics back. See, Gene Dill don't really know. He probably, he, probably, he probably don't really know the truth, but he know the truth. He dropped the nigga, kept his publics and everything. What are we talking about? Special delivery still be jamming to this day. Special delivery still be jumping to this day. And who eating off that? Guess who? Yeah, take that. Diddy. What are we talking about here? That's what he's known for, right? Exactly. He's been doing this shit for 20 years, man. 27 years. That's why G Debt went crazy. A nigga for a nigga to confess in 2010 for a murder happened back in 1993 when you was young, bro. Back in 1993 when you was young. My nigga, the only way you're gonna go crazy like that is either because you broke. You know why? Because you had a lot of money the time when whatever Dale Puff gave you, and you blew that shit. But then you start finding out the business. G debt, meaning who I'm talking about, start finding out the business, start finding out about start finding about publishing stuff like that, and that's what happened. That's what happened. I'm telling y'all right now, that's the only way a nigga can go, go crazy, bro. <laughs> Let's play the last clip though. On the 15th of December 2010, a man walked into Manhattan's 25th precinct to confess to a 17-year-old murder that he'd gotten away with. His name was Travell Coleman, or better known to some by his stage name, G Dad. Hey yo, sign, seal, delivered in just a nick of time. In 2001, G Dad was riding a wave of success on P Diddy's Bad Boy Records. But he was haunted by his past. On the 19th of October 1993, 18 year old Depp attempted to rob a man on Park Avenue. I said, well, oh, give me the money, man. The guy grabbed the gun. And that's when I fired. 17 years later, the guilt and remorse from that evening led Depp to turn himself into law enforcement. I didn't realize it was hitting him or anything. I just fired. And on the 8th of May 2012, G Depp was sentenced to 15 years to life, adding another name to long list of artists plagued by the alleged curse of Bad Boy Records. Is it a curse on Bad Boy Records? You goddamn right it is. 
and everything I speak on is a legend, but we all know that. What are we talking about? Yeah, that part. Come on, this nigga confessed to a murder back in 1993, bro, 92. He was 18 years old. Like I told y'all, he was young. Signed a deal with Puff in early 2000s. Like I told y'all, mad, I mean earlier, 2001. Him and Black Rob signed that deal. He signed a deal right behind Black Rob Paul. Pussy and the talent blew up. Now, y'all got to remember, this is early 2000s. Big just died like five years before that. And I'm lying, four years, pardon me, 97. G Depp got signed 2001 around in 2002. Black Rob was already signed. That's when he started dropping that woe and all that. They had to build Bad Boy back up because of Big Depp. What are we talking about here? So that nigga was just snatching talent, but Puff no talent when he knew it. You seen the talent with G Depp? Huh? Come here, I got something. Let me sign to a deal. We about to, yeah. Special Delivery, couple other songs went crazy. Child of the Ghetto, that shit went gold. What are we talking about here? That's his album. Well, look it up. Child of the Ghetto, man. That's, that's yeah, that's that, that part. That album go hard. Do y'all research. That's I used to bump that album, man. G Debt was hard. That nigga was, he wasn't nothing to play with. He came in the game with a with a different type of talent, especially coming from Harlem. On the 15th of December 2010, a man walked into Manhattan's 25th precinct to confess to a 17-year-old murder that he'd gotten away with. His name was Travell Coleman or better known to some by his stage name, g -Dad. Hey yo, son, still, delivered in just a nick of time. In 2001, g -Dad was riding a wave of success on P. Diddy's Bad Boy Records. But he was haunted by his past. On the 19th of October, 1993, 18-year-old Depp attempted to rob a man on Park Avenue. I said, well, well give me the money, man. The guy grabbed the gun. And that's when I fired. 17 years later, the guilt and remorse from that evening led Depp to turn himself into law enforcement. I didn't realize it was hitting him or anything. I just fired. And on the 8th of May 2012, G Depp was sentenced to 15 years to life, adding another name to the long list of artists plagued by the alleged curse of Bad Boy Records. It's a curse. Puff knew what he was doing. Like I told y'all, there's no way in the world nigga gonna come. Nigga just signed in 2001. Then, then nine to 10 years later, you confess to a murder that happened back when you was 18 years old. What, what, what are we talking about here? That sound like somebody that went cuckoo, like they said, that was a rumor back then. When the shit first happened to g Depp, when that shit hit the news and everything. g Depp, fan, I was a g Depp fan. I'm like, damn, my nigga confessed to a what? Oh, love, that nigga, where the money at? That's the first thing I'm thinking. This nigga got single smashes, still special delivery. Like, what are we talking about here? Publish. He ain't own none of that. Pardon me. Nigga went crazy over that. Couldn't feed his family. Come on, what are we talking about? This shit goes on all the time with these artists. That's why he went crazy. But see, my thing is he went crazy because they made him go crazy. Nah, but what you talking about? You on G Death still was, yeah, G Death still was hanging with Puff when he was doing the. Go do your research around 2005, 6, 4, and all that. When they used to do the reunion, Bad Boy, and all that shit. G Depp and Black Rob was the main ones that was angry with Puff doing them reunions. What are we talking about here? The locks wasn't even beat. Locks was like, yo, you got to pay us. But Black Rob and G Depp was the main ones with Puff doing them Bad Boy reunions in the early 2000s. Come on, man. Smash that like button. Nigga probably went cuckoo right after that in them goddamn parties or something. We don't, we, we don't know, but I'm just saying it's a legend. You take the wrong drink, you smoke the wrong, you know what? You end up going cuckoo. Am I lying? What are we talking about here? That's the type of shit that make you want to go down to the station. And you're broke, your money low, can't get in touch with Diddy no more. Black Rob telling you the whole long thing's going to get on, going to get right. Come on. Don't that shit sound real? That sound like a picture I could paint right there. That sound more realistic for a nigga to go cool, cool like that, to go to a station in 2010 and something happening when you was 18 years old in 1992 or 93. What do we, are you kidding me right now? Only way you're going cool, cool like that because you went broke, nigga. You can't get in touch with a nigga that signed you. That part.
or probably went to some party a couple years earlier than that and them niggas, yeah, the rest is history. A couple months later, nigga, you start going crazy. You don't know what the fuck is going on with you now. A legend. Everything I speak on is a legend. 2010, now you don't walk yourself down to the precinct, precinct and confess to a murder that happened when you was 18 years old? Nah. Nah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Y'all seen that confession? Y'all seen the clip I just played y'all with him over there? Cause, I mean, with, uh, and, and when he confessed into the victim. Look at, look at his face, bro. So this night you were looking to let's get some money, you said. Yeah. And uh, I, 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 rode, I rode the bike over. I rode the he looked like he's lost. Look, come on. Sound like a Diddy curse to me. That part. Look where everybody that's under Diddy. Where they at? Besides the locks. The only reason, besides Mace. Everybody else, come on, they're doing bad. Or they passed away. That part. Come on, man. This is nasty work out here, man. But God bless for, for G. Dead coming home after 13 years, man. I mean, there's some clips going around with him. There's some clips going around with him and Loon hanging out. That's another bad boy artist. Loon ain't go crazy, but Puffy Puck Diddy did him dirty. That part. And there's plenty of interviews with Loon saying, I don't want to talk bad about it because because Loon, you know, Loon is on his own religion. You know, on his Muslims, you know what I mean? He on his real religion. He take it serious. So Loon don't even talk about Puff. Or he don't talk about Diddy and stuff that the contract and all because Loon know the lot. People forget about Loon. Loon is from, y'all don't know who Loon is. That's the dude that was down with Mace, all in world, all that. He ended up doing a couple singles and stuff. He went, he went solo with Puff and Puff, you know what I mean? They went, you know, he did a couple singles. But that nigga was hanging with Diddy a lot too, that part. Just like Black Rob and just like G-Dep. So what are we talking about here? <laughs> Come on, every artist that was under Diddy, man, something happened, man. Shine ended up going through mad years. Diddy turned on that nigga with that shooting in the club. Now the female is back. She's now she's all resurfaced on, on the internet. She the female's all on the internet now. The lady that got shot in the face in the club that made Sean go do all them years. She's saying that Diddy did it. And now you got G Duck. So y'all tell me, y'all think G Dent went cuckoo could have reason what I just told y'all? Money, couldn't get in touch with Diddy no more. Diddy got his published. He can't feed his goddamn family no more. He why went cuckoo after all them years with the bad boy reunion, going to the party. Like I said, you take the wrong drink, smoke the wrong smoke, you end up going cuckoo, allegedly. That shit goes on in the goddamn city in the town that we live in. Suburban areas, whatever you live in. And I'm lying? What are we talking about here? So what make you think exactly? Let me get this nigga out the way, man, because this nigga driving me crazy about this publishing all that. Hey, yo, that's Diddy talking. Black wild man, control your You don't think Diddy got tired of niggas coming at them, calling his phone, yo, I'm on my publish. You don't think Diddy went through all that shit with mad artisans? That shit be ahead of Niggas pulling up in this building in front of that downtown. I mean, all that shit. Diddy got stopped, niggas. Uh, the locks wasn't the only niggas that was doing shit like that. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. There was other artists that was trying to fight and get their shit back from Diddy. And a lot of them went crazy. Or they deceased. Or they just silent. They don't want to talk to them. Or they just gave up. Exactly. And I believe G. Depp was one of the niggas that went crazy. And I believe, allegedly, he had something to do with that shit. So you don't have to deal with them. I'm keep telling y'all, the singles that G Depp had, Special Delivery and a couple of other ones that I can't quite remember the name, but if y'all do y'all research, them shits when they were smashing the radio at that time. Certain songs you still could play in, in this era right now and still eat off that from early 2000s that still be smashing the club and Special Delivery is one of them type of songs. Diddy's getting a nice ass check off that every month. What are we talking about here? Just like you're getting a check on all the mother people publish he got. Come on, man.
Teddy don't need the money. Yeah, he need that money now. He all these goddamn allegations. He got to pay lawyers, man. But I'm talking about throughout the years, he got paid, man. Paid. Published me in a lot. That's a check coming to your house every month, man. What we talking about it? Every year, every month, I love you want to play. I love you want that shit to come. He own all that. Meaning Diddy. This nigga living in the hood, can't feed his family none. I, come on. How he met Diddy? Met Puff Daddy. This is to, you know, to... to... Go back and show y'all. Diddy knew exactly what to do. Let me pull up in the projects we can live at with this big ass Bentley. Brainwash this nigga, man. <laughs> <laughs> Met Puff Daddy. This is to you know to, to to meet him formally, to you know talk about the contract and all, and everything. He, he sent the Bentley to the project. I was just G Dep, you know what I mean, running around, doing my little my little shows here and there. You know what I'm saying, whatever I was doing. I mean, I saw something silver coming down the block, and the lights, you know, the lights on the car on, on the Bentley got you know they got the round lights, so it was like it was coming down the block, and you seen it coming down the block almost like you know what i mean like it looked like unreal like a uh, spacecraft in the in the in the in the, in the, in the neighborhood you know what i mean he rolled out the window it was like you know it was like it was like kind of unspoken i kind of knew that it was the car you know what i'm saying like wow he, he, he laid it down flat he was like yo i'm a, i'm gonna sign you no lawyer present none of that it goes back to what i be telling people G. Dan had no goddamn lawyer when he signed that contract. What are we talking about here? Told him jumping that Bentley, nigga. He probably signed that contract right in that goddamn Bentley. Am I lying? That's the way it sound like, the way G. Dan broke it down. No lawyer presence or nothing. And made millions off this nigga. Mills. Special delivery went platinum. Probably went double platinum. But I know for sure that shit went platinum as a single. <laughs> and who was on who's on the who's on the remix? Diddy was on that goddamn remix too. Come on, man. Y'all gotta know how this game play, and everything I speak on is a legend. But like I said, it's a back end to the story. G Depp just ain't go crazy by itself and confess on no murder back in 1992-93 when he was 18 years old. Money. Can't feed your family, can't reach out to the nigga that signed you, all that, that would make you go crazy. That part. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, man. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't. Like that smoke up. Comment it below. Let me know what's going on. Y'all tell me how y'all tell me how y'all y'all tell me how y'all feel about this G Depp situation. He made a homie here now, 13 years. Y'all tell me. Y'all think he just really went cuckoo by himself? Nah, I don't think so. That's my opinion, and everything I speak on is a legend. I want to hear y'all opinion. Make sure y'all comment below. Smash that like button. If they know, they know. It's your boy Smoke News TV. Salute, gang. I'm up out of here, man.